I'm going to use up my time, even though I shouldn't, because I always go over time, but uh, no, I do not know who Too Short is. <laughs> and uh, I almost suggested to Shane that if we're short of speeches, I'll be glad to go 15 minutes, but I knew what the answer to that was also. So now I've already used up 30 seconds. What I want to do today is recommend to you this wonderful book, Profiles in Courage, by John Kennedy. And I read this often, at least yearly. And regardless of your political persuasion, I strongly recommend it to you. In the introduction, John Kennedy lays out very clearly what his message is. And that is that public servants must have an abundance of courage. And in the book, he talks about eight US senators and how they rose to this demand that courage predominated their life. The definition of courage can be all over the spectrum. We could go to Ernest Hemingway's pressure, grace under pressure. I also like uh, Henry David Thoreau's definition of living a deliberate, a purposeful life. That's a person of great courage. Another one that I stuck, uh, got stuck on when I was preparing the speech is courage does not mean that we are not full of fear. It means that we face down our fears. And we demand, we absolutely demand that the people that we elect for office are people of courage. But people that we elect for office, they have two very strong pullings that uh, are difficult for them to reach this uh, courage that we demand of them. And those two pulls are loyalty. And the first is loyalty to their party. They are members of a political party, and that party has a platform that they are expected to support, and support very strongly. The other loyalty that pulls at them and makes them want to compromise on courage is their loyalty to their constituents, the people that got them to the office. And they must be responsible to them, but not to the point that they uh, go down on their courage. Uh, when we elect people, it's not only that we're electing them because we believe in them, but we also want them to be well-informed people of moral courage. When we look inside ourselves, we, each person, knows what is right and what is wrong. And we expect these people that we elect to represent us to be able to go within themselves and say, I must do what is right, regardless of the loyalties that I owe to other people. My first obligation is good to bring out that good of our whole nation by voting the right way. In this book, John Kennedy talks about a wonderful senator from Kansas Senator Edmund Ross. And he was a one-term senator, which tells you a lot. He stood up for what was right. And as a result, he did not return to office. And he was senator during the Reconstruction period, a very difficult time in our American history. And basically what the problem was at that time, right after the Civil War, do we punish the South for what they've done, or do we bring them back in and have a real United, nation, uh, United States? And the president of the time, Andrew Johnson, who followed the, uh, Abraham Lincoln after his assassination, wanted to be conciliatory. Let's start all over again. Let's move forward. Let's not be punitive. Let's not be vindictive towards the South. And there was a party uh, referred to as the radical wing of the party that said, no, that's being too soft. These people were responsible for four years of bloodshed, of fighting families against families, brothers against brothers. We must punish them. And as a result of this radical wing of this party, 
they decided that the only way to really impose their will upon the South was to, pardon me, was uh, to get this man out of office, to impeach and remove Andrew Johnson from office. What happens then is that it, the vote count was made, and these people that are of this radical wing knew that it was going to come down to one vote, and that vote was going to be Edmund Ross, who was of this radical wing. And he was badgered, he was pleaded with, the party sat down with him and said, do you understand how important it is that you go and vote the party line? We must get this man out of office. And Edwin Ross never divulged who he was going to vote to for until the day of the voting. And he stood up, and everybody knew he was the key person. And he said in a very loud and clear voice, not guilty. And President Johnson remained in office. And Edmund Ross says in his own words, I knew as soon as I said those two words that I looked at my open grave and my political future was doomed. And his prophetic words were right. He served one term. He returned to the great state of Kansas. He was called the Benedict Arnold of Kansas. He was scorned upon, vilified, but Edmund Ross could look himself in the face every morning and said, I was a man of principle who stood up for what is right. And this book not only talks about Edmund Ross, but seven other people that had the courage, the moral courage, to go deep within themselves and say, I must, I will do what is right. Thank you.